What's going on you guys? Welcome to my video. In today's video, I wanna talk about the five biggest things I learned from bodybuilding for the past 12 plus years. I started lifting when I was in sophomore, 10th grade of high school. I was extremely skinny. It was hard for me to gain weight and I was getting bullied in high school because I was so small. I think I was about 115 pounds, five foot five, very small kid. I was begging my parents to get me a home gym. Went on Craigslist, got a home gym for $150, had a bench press, lat pull down, and the rest was history. So from that time on, I started eating whatever I could, healthy foods, you know, salmon, steak, um, chicken, rice, good carbohydrates. I was eating all that I could and I was lifting as much as I possibly could. And within a few months, I started gaining weight like crazy. Um, I was very determined to gain weight. I was really fed up with being bullied and pushed around because of, I was so small. Um, and I was actually weak, like naturally weak as a kid. Um, I couldn't lift more than like 95 pounds on bench press and that's pretty bad. So I went from a 95 pound bench press as a freshman year in high school to 275 as a senior in high school. And I went from 115 pounds to about 210 pounds. So I gained nearly 100 pounds in four years. My strength went up like crazy. And right now I am 230 pounds at about 20% body fat. I do have high body fat right now because I haven't been on my diet, haven't been going to the gym as much, but I am still going to the gym at least three times a week and I am more disciplined now. I am fasting, all that good stuff. So to get right into it, the number one thing I learned from bodybuilding over the past 12 years is bodybuilding doesn't just build your body. It builds your mind. That's the most important thing is building your mind and callousing the mind, right? Anytime you come across a decision, comfort or pain, you always wanna choose pain because if you choose pain, your life will be comfortable, right? This, this is no secret. And weightlifting has helped me make those decisions, those hard decisions faster because I am so accustomed to pushing my mind. When, when my body's starting to give out saying, no, I can't do anymore, even though it can, my mind is what pushes my body, right? So when you see somebody or your friend or your, even yourself and you're lifting on bench or lifting on squat rack or whatever, and you give up, but your body could do more. It's your mind that gave up, and that is very weak for you to give up before your body. You'll see people who have five, six more reps to go, and they could do five, six more reps, but they give up, and that is their mind giving up before their body. Your body is your subconscious mind, and what I mean by that is Say you're sitting down, you're about to do some work, right? Project, homework, whatever. And your body's like, oh, I'm hungry. Let's go get, let's go get some food, then we'll sit back down. Let's go, uh, go for a walk real quick, then we'll sit back down. Let's go take a break real quick, we'll sit back down. That's your body telling you these things. That's a subconscious mind, it does not wanna sit. But you, as the conscious being, you have to tell your mind, you know, no, sit down, we're gonna do this work, and we are not getting up, until we finish it. That is your mind working, right? Not your body, that's your mind working. Lifting has helped me strengthen that mind, strengthen that decision-making mechanism. When I'm about to take a cold shower in the morning, that little delay of like, should I take it or should I not? Should I take it or should I not? Lifting has helped me make those hard decisions more quickly because I'm always pushing my mind to the limit. Yes, it's a, it's a body weight exercise or, it helps build your body. Weightlifting does help build your body and strengthen your muscles and all that. But more than that, it helps strengthen your mind. And that's the number one thing I learned from weightlifting. A lot of successful people, not all, but a lot of them who are successful, they work out. They strengthen their body. They strengthen their, their mind because they know the benefits. Participate and willingly participate in painful and uncomfortable tasks voluntarily you have to voluntarily participate in hard tasks like taking a cold shower like eating healthy like going to the gym or doing cardio these are all things that are complicated a little bit hard and you pushing yourself to doing it says a lot about yourself and weightlifting and, and bodybuilding has helped me build that 
that decision making um, muscle. The next big thing that I learned after 12 years of bodybuilding was consistency is everything. I remember when I was lifting back in the day, like maybe eight years ago, I probably had about, you know, four years under my belt. And there was this guy, he's like this, this guy on my hockey team at the time, lanky as shit. And anytime he'd go on the ice and play, he'd get ran through. Like he had no balance, nothing. Even though he had this big body, he'd get destroyed on the ice. And he said, you know, fuck it. I'm going to start weightlifting. I'm going to get big. And he started weightlifting. And it was kind of funny in the beginning because he would like move the weights like this and shaking and all that. But this dude was the most consistent person I have ever seen. And I moved from my hometown to DC. And I went back to that gym, like I think it was like five years later. And I would always see him uploading on Snapchat of him lifting. He was consistent. I mean, he was going every single day um, for years on end. And just to see how big of a transformation he had from day one of lifting to after five years is astounding. I mean, it tells you the power of consistency in anything, right? Any Anything in life, if you're consistent at it, you will be good. I'm not trying to be a naysayer or anything, but I didn't really see a future for him in weightlifting, I was like, there is no way he's gonna be lifting like X amount of weight or he's gonna, he's not gonna look built or anything. He's just not that guy, right? But it just, it showed me like consistency and perseverance. Like it will go a long way. The days that I didn't wanna go lifting, the, the months even, where I was on like vacation in Europe for over a month, I didn't touch a weight. I wasn't even eating healthy. This guy I knew was putting the work in the gym. In a matter of time, he got bigger than me, stronger than me. He looked really fucking good. And that, yeah, maybe genetics does have a play in it, but consistency more than anything has a play in, in how he turned out. So even on your worst days, guys, show up, go to the gym, all right? I'm not saying go to the gym every day, but at least four days a week, you wanna be lifting, you wanna be active, you wanna be moving your body around. Don't make any excuses. How you show up on your worst days you know, that's that's what's important. You always want to show up no matter what. So consistency is number two. The number two most important thing I learned is in order for you to grow and to, to get better at whatever it is you're doing, you have to be consistent, especially at the gym. We don't see much of a change in a few months, but after a year, two years, three years, 10 years, you see a dramatic difference. And all it is is consistency. You know, it's harder for us to see the change in our bodies because we see ourselves in the mirror every day. We check ourselves out every day. But to the, a person who hasn't seen you in months, they're the ones who are going to realize that you grew or you got stronger. It's hard for you to see the results because you are living with yourself and seeing yourself every day. But trust me, be consistent and you will seriously change. So first one was building your mind. Number two was consistency. Number three is the mind muscle connection. You have to have a mind muscle connection when you are lifting weights and bodybuilding. I'm not talking about strength training. I'm talking about bodybuilding. If you care about how your body looks, the aesthetics, what matters most is time under tension. You know, how, how much weight or whatever you're lifting, how much time you are under that tension. You're not just going up and down quickly. Time under tension and developing that mind to muscle connection. What I mean by that is if you're doing bicep curls, you see your bicep squeezing at the top and releasing slowly and you're still under that tension, that tension's still on the bicep and you're releasing slowly. You're going back up, squeeze, and you feel that bicep squeezing. The act of doing that is you are shaping your muscles. You go to any bodybuilder, professional, IFBB pro bodybuilder, like Kai Green, for example, They'll go in depth about how important it is to develop that mind-muscle connection. You're not just merely lifting weights from point A to point B, you know, and go going up in weight every week. Although you will gain muscle that way, it's not the most efficient way. The most efficient way is to have progressive overload. That means one week you're lifting maybe, say, 100 pounds. The following week you don't want to be lifting 100 pounds. You either want to be lifting 100 pounds for a little bit more reps than you did the previous week, or you are lifting more weight, but you always wanna be increasing the weight. That's progressive overload. But you also wanna have that mind-muscle connection. You are not a weightlifter. You are a bodybuilder. You're building your body. Now, I don't know about you specifically, but if you care more about how you look and how your body looks, more than how much weight you're pushing, 
you are a bodybuilder. You are building your body. You have a vision of how your body is going to look and you are sculpting it in that way. Maybe you have some fat, some love handles. Maybe you're going to fast during the day. You're gonna incorporate some cardio or an ab workout, but you are a sculptor as a bodybuilder and time under tension and the mind muscle connection, it has really helped me improve in my fitness and it helped shape my, my body then when I was merely just lifting from point A to point B and not really thinking. You wanna control the weight, you want to feel the weight and you want to have that mind muscle connection the number four biggest thing i learned from bodybuilding is genetics is huge now i don't want you guys to put blame on genetics or say oh because i have bad genetics i'm not going to be this big or look like him um yeah you most likely won't look like the next guy okay that's just reality there's so much that comes into play when we talk about bodybuilding genetics at an IFBB Pro Bodybuilding Championship, right? They don't care about how much muscle you have. They care about the proportions. They care about where your muscle insertions start. You might have terrible bicep genetics. And what that means is where does your bicep start? Some people's bicep starts halfway up their bicep and their bicep doesn't look good, but that's just their genetics. Some people have full bicep insertions. That means their bicep will go long all the way to where like your elbow is like right above the elbow that's like full dense muscle insertions which is ideal for bodybuilding you just look better and more full even if your bicep isn't as fully developed as it could be it still looks more full calf insertion same thing people you know they train tirelessly to build their calves but some people don't have good calf genetics most people don't and for you to have like big round calves you have to have the 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 genetics present in order to, for you to fill them out some people most people have high calf insertions and they have like little calves that doesn't mean to go all out in the gym and try to maximize as much as you can you know you can't change your genetics you can only play the best hand that you can with the hand that you've been dealt don't complain the next guy might look better than you and might look better than you more quickly you know, he has to maybe lift for two years and you have to lift for five, but that's just life, okay? Some people have genetics for, for math. Some people have genetics for creativity and art. Some people have genetics for bodybuilding. You know, don't complain. Just deal with the hand that you've been dealt and maximize on that. Some people have asymmetrical chests. One chest will be bigger. The chest isn't like fully symmetrical. It'll like start out here. Some people's abs aren't fully symmetrical. It's not a perfect six pack. It'll be like lopsided. You can't control that. That's just genetics. But don't blame your genetics. It is what it is. Go all out no matter what and deal with the hand that you've been dealt. Maximize on that. That's all I could say as far as it comes with genetics, right? And the last thing I learned is your diet. Your diet, you know, you are what you eat. And in order for you to be a high performance individual, not just in the gym, but in work, um, and whatever you're doing and the way you think you have to eat healthy you have to eat whole foods organic foods um, most people know how to eat but they just decide not to eat um, healthy they drink sugary drinks and energy drinks all that good stuff you know and I was I was the culprit of that not too long ago I would drink energy drinks and I would have carbs first thing in the morning and I would load up on pasta and rice and all that would not just affect my body and I would get a gut. I wouldn't feel good, I wouldn't want to go to the gym and my thinking was slowed down so much. It felt like there was just a cloud in my mind where I couldn't properly form a sentence without saying uh or mm or just thinking a lot. Um, what you eat is very important, it's very crucial. You know, if you drive a BMW, Mercedes or a high performance car, they need high performance fuel. You know, if you drive a Prius or a Nissan or some just lower end, lower tier car, you just need regular gas. But performance vehicles, they need high octane gas, right? Same for individuals, for human beings. If you wanna be a high performance individual in the gym, at work, and just be a healthy person, you have to eat healthy. 80% or more of bodybuilding is your diet. What you eat is what you become. You eat like a little girl, you'll look like a little girl. Don't eat six times a day. And this is what's worked for me. You know, don't eat six times a day. I eat one, two meals a day. I fast throughout the day. So I'm burning fat 
throughout the day I feel more energized and at night yeah not not late, late at night but like after my workout I'll be eating a lot a lot of protein a lot of whole foods and I won't eat three hours before bedtime so I can properly sleep um, I can go more in depth um, about your diet in another video but I do have a video of what you should be eating um, it's like how to increase your testosterone I go in pretty in depth of what you should eat so that's the five things I have learned over the past 12 years of bodybuilding um, you know bodybuilding and, and building your dream body is a lifelong process it's not two three years and you've achieved the body you know you still got to maintain it um, because if you don't it's gonna your muscles are gonna turn into fat um, and you, you won't be healthy so it's a lifelong process take it for the long haul guys don't try to get um, big quick schemes or take this one pill and you'll blow up in size or go the non natural route you know if you don't see yourself competing you don't need you know performance enhancing drugs it's not worth it uh, people die really young you know it's not worth having a muscular body for your life so stay away from all these drugs and all these you know pro hormones and there's so many things that you can be putting in your body that's just not good and people are putting it out there a lot of the influencers today you know this is sort of like a side tangent but a lot of the influencers today are not natural um, and they claim they're natural I would always look up to people who are not natural and they would say they're natural so my expectations were way too high so having known all this guys put in the work be consistent um, just maximize your your genetics and you will be on the right path guys to to building that strong powerful body that you've always dreamed of and with that being said guys if you like this video just like it subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and I will see you all on the next one